Let's start off by talking about high school. Who was your favorite teacher in high school? Um, I think my favorite teacher in, in high school was Miss Malika. She was my second grade teacher. And I think she eventually, like at the later stages, she became my eighth grade teacher as well. So I was very familiar with her and she remembered me. Um, so we had good memories together. What was your favorite subject in high school? Um, my favorite subject would be, I think, was English because I liked reading stories and novels and it just kept me engaged. Wherein like with the other subjects you had to, um, it was more technical, but I enjoyed the reading bit and I still do enjoy reading. So I'd say English. Do you ever miss being in high school? Um, I do actually, because um, I started working very early. I did not get to experience the university or college. So um, the memories that I have or the friends I have is from high school. And I do think about times where we could just go back and have a reunion and like have that moment again. Now let's talk about transportation. Do you take public transportation or private transportation? Um, I do not like public transportation. Um, I moved to Dubai a few years ago and I got my driving license just because I hated (laughs) going in metros or um, buses. Um, So I got my driving license and I enjoy driving. Is it easy to catch public transportation in your country? Um, In my country, yes, it's quite easy and convenient, I would say. The streets are very busy. The traffic is crazy. Um, So it's easy, easier for people to get to work with public transportation. Um, Yeah. Is driving a private car popular in your country? Um, I would say in countryside, it's quite popular um, as there's not as much modes of transport as in the big cities. So in the countryside, it's quite popular, wherein in the big cities, people prefer taking public transportation. It's faster, it's convenient. Now let's talk about the internet. How often do you use the internet? I think every day. (laughs) We are also addicted to internet, so yeah. (laughs) What are your favorite websites to visit? Um, I think it's Instagram. I think Instagram is the one website I use every single day whenever I'm bored. Um, just to see what my friends are up to. And that's, yeah, Instagram. Do you think that you ever use the internet too much? Um, I'd say when I'm having a bad day, I would just stay home and like scroll on Instagram and just try to escape reality (laughs) in a way. But on the other days, like when I'm out, I do not use Instagram or any social media websites that much. Now let's talk about your free time. What do you normally like to do in your free time? A lot of things, actually. It just, um, I think I'm someone who likes variety in everyday life. So um, just going out, checking out a new place or trying different activity, seeing my friends. Yeah, I try to keep busy on my days off. Are you very active in your free time? I like to think I am active, yes. Um, If I have nothing to do, I just go to the gym um, or to the pool, um, read a book. But I try to do something on my free time, something, yeah. What do you normally like to do on the weekend? Um, Like I mentioned earlier, I like to see my friends, um, try a different restaurant, cafe or an activity. Just last weekend, I went to try this ice bath. You just jump into a bucket of ice. (laughs) Uh, So just, yeah, try different things. (laughs) Describe a day when you thought the weather was perfect. Where were you? Um, I was in Dubai a couple of months ago, um, uh, just when the summer was about to end. Um, There was this day when I was just standing in my balcony. It was a bit cloudy that day. Um, And then like a few minutes later, I saw the lightning and the thunderstorm and it just got darker. Um, And then I was standing in my balcony and I saw the lightning and I have the whole view of Dubai skyline. So I could see the Burj Khalifa, the Dubai frame. 
and I saw the lightning on top of, like right on top of Burj Khalifa, which was beautiful. I recorded it and I posted it on Instagram. And then I saw a lot of people were posting the same stories, but from different places. Um, a friend of mine came over. Um, we had a glass of wine on the balcony and then it started to rain. Um, like heavily, rain heavily. So thunderstorm, rain, and it's just not very common to see that in Dubai. That's why I thought the weather was perfect because it's always hot and sunny and humid. And as soon as like the season starts to change, um, I think they do something called cloud seeding where um, then they make it rain apparently. Um, so it was very beautiful to see the rain. We had a nice day, nice evening in the balcony, having a glass of wine, uh, looking at the beautiful weather. The traffic was very crazy, by the way. The roads were flooded. Um, and I think like a lot of, we ordered some food, by the way. Um, and it took us two hours to get the food, the deliveries. That's okay. the end of the two minutes and that's the end of part two and we're going to move on to part three now. So we've been talking about a perfect day and we're going to continue to talk about the weather. And um, What type of weather do people in your country dislike the most? To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two, and part three, and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much, and let's get back to the video. <laughs> um, I think, um my country, India, it's quite um, hot and humid, especially some parts of India. So I, I suppose people hate the summer because it can get really intense. Uh, but where I grew up, it's not um, very hot. So some parts, like especially the north, it's not very hot. Actually, like throughout the year, um, the temperature, I'd say, would go up to 22 degrees. But we're in like down from Delhi onwards, it gets really hot and humid. And it's just because a lot of people use public transportation and it's not easy to use public transportation or walk around because when it's just so hot. So I suppose they would hate the hot climate more than the cold. Yeah. What jobs can be affected by different weather conditions? Um, a lot of jobs uh, related to transport, I feel, would be affected. Driving, um, I'd say, taxis or buses, even uh, the flights, pilots or cabin crew, um, when the weather is not right, the flights might be delayed. And then if it's raining, the, the taxis would uh, not be able to drive because of the water or the floods. So I think a lot of transport related jobs and even food for that matter, like the deliveries, um, all the delivery uh, companies, they would have an impact mm -hmm. of in, you know, in a way. Now let's talk about weather forecasts. What's the best way to get accurate information about the weather? Uh, well, I personally use Google Maps, uh, sorry, Google weather <laughs> reports. Um, I'm not very sure about this one because it depends from person to person. For me, I think Google um, weather reports are quite um, accurate, but I, I do not have a clear answer for that. Is it easy to predict the weather in your country? Um, I suppose it is, yeah, uh, because like I said earlier, uh, some parts of India, the weather like cannot, the temperature doesn't go over a certain uh, degrees, but wherein some parts are really hot and humid throughout the year. So I think it's quite easy to predict, but when it comes to um, rain or monsoon season, it's a bit hard, like last year. This year, sorry, a few months ago, um, in the north of India, it was raining heavily and the rain did not stop for, um, I'd say, two weeks. So that was not predictable. That's the end of the speaking test. Well done. Thank you.
you. I'd like to give you some feedback yes. on your performance because I think that you're capable of getting one of the very highest bands. Um, but there are some things that you just need to be aware of. So what I'll do is I'll divide the, um, the feedback up into part one, part two and part three, yeah. and then give you feedback on fluency, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, talk right. about the technical parts. Um, on what band scores you, you would expect. To thank you for making it this far in the video, I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band seven, eight, and nine success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. We do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world, and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. All you have to do is just look down in the description, just click that, and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. Part one was great. Um, you developed your answers enough. Uh, it was like talking to a friend or talking to a colleague. Um, you could tell that you were a little bit nervous, um, but those nerves didn't really, in part one anyway, didn't really prevent you from, from doing well. And, and you were you know, answering the questions naturally. Your nervousness didn't cause any problems with fluency. On test day, yeah. you might be even more nervous. <laughs> uh, so a lot of my advice to you yeah. will be about kind of preventing nerves taking over. The, the way I always describe it is our brain is kind of like a computer yeah. and stress is is like putting too much, opening too many programs on your computer. Yeah. Like you might have a great MacBook Pro, yeah. but if you put it under stress, everything kind of slows down. Yeah. And that's just, I think, the same with you. You've got a, a MacBook <laughs> Pro up there for, for speaking English, mm -hmm. but you're, you're putting a little bit too much pressure on yourself. So yeah. the enemy is really yourself, if that makes <laughs> sense. And um, you're more than capable of doing well. And what I would always say is, I know it's difficult because you're speaking to an examiner you've never met before, but imagine a friend, imagine someone you're close with and they're, they're just asking you these questions. Imagine you're in a coffee shop in, in your, your local area having a coffee. Maybe if they ask you some of these questions, you'd be like, <laughs> what, why are you asking me that? Yeah. But just that sort of, of frame of mind, that attitude, yeah. um, that often does, does help students. The other thing to know is like, I would not lie to you. I'm telling you that you are very, very good. You are more than capable. So you, you should have confidence in your in yourself. Part two um, was good also. There was a little bit of repetition halfway through. You were like, yeah, my friend came around, had a glass yeah. of wine. Um, that would be a problem if you constantly did that. So if you said uh, something like there was lightning my friend came around, we had a glass of wine, we put it on Instagram. Yeah, there was lightning that day and, you know, yeah. my friend came around. Yeah. You didn't do that. You just repeated one little bit. The reason you did that, I think, I might be wrong, is you were trying to think of more things and yeah. you wanted to keep talking while, was that correct? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so the examiner will recognize that yeah. and probably won't mark you down for that okay. uh, they would only mark you down if you you did that a lot because there's four bullet points what a lot of students do is they will talk about the bullet points the four or, or maybe some other things for a minute and then they'll just go back and they'll rehash them okay. they'll just repeat them yeah. you didn't do that but again on test day if you get nervous it's kind of like a a defensive thing to do yeah. is like look at the bullet points again oh I'll, i'm just going to talk about yeah. those things so a good tip is to um add maybe three or four more bullet points okay. common things like how you felt past present future examples stories things related to that topic yeah. and then when you start to think oh i'm running out of things to say just look down talk about that okay. and then talk about that so yeah. just give yourself enough ammunition um okay. uh, to use part 3 um you did you did very well in part 3 the examiner will ask you more difficult questions the worst thing you can do is when you get a difficult question is just a lot of people just laugh and go i know i don't know yeah. you didn't do that yeah. even though you did get one question that yeah. you didn't know a huge amount about you did very well because you attempted an answer. 
if you attempt an answer, what you're saying to the examiner is, I don't know about this topic specifically, but my there's nothing wrong with my English. Yeah. Remember, it's an English test. It's yeah. not a knowledge test. It's not an IQ test. Now, band nine is the top mark. Yeah. Um, I think you're, you could be capable of getting a band nine, but let's see whether you would actually get a band yeah. nine. The first thing is pronunciation. Okay. The examiner will be thinking about two things. Uh, clarity, can they understand all the words that, that you're saying? And then higher level pronunciation features. So we'll, yeah. we'll talk about clarity first. You're from India yeah. um, and there's nothing wrong with having an Indian accent, a Vietnamese accent, an Irish accent. Yeah. There's nothing wrong okay. with any of those things. But a lot of the Indian students that we work with are worried about their their accent being too strong. Okay. I, I don't think that there's a problem with having a strong accent and any accent. But I think what they're saying is that their accent causes problems for the listener yeah. with, with certain words. Yeah. That is not an issue for you okay. at all. There's not a single word that I couldn't understand. You still have your your, your Indian accent and that's a great thing. <laughs> you should be very proud of it. Yeah. There aren't extra marks for sounding British yeah. or sounding American. I'm sure that you know lots of Indian celebrities that have an Indian accent but speak uh, English yeah. very, very clearly. Yeah. Um, Priyanka Chopra, for example, yeah. like she speaks with an Indian accent, yeah, but you can does. understand every word. Yeah. That's the same, the same with you. Okay. So you're doing very, very well there. One thing about being nervous and being stressed yeah. is that um, people can sometimes speak kind of inside their mouth yeah. um, and speak <laughs> at the back of their throat yeah. because it's, it's just a, it's a subconscious thing where we don't want to be criticized. Yeah. We, we're afraid of saying something wrong. So we kind of speak inside our own mouth. I used to do it when I was a child. My <laughs> little <laughs> nine-year-old boy does it all the time. Yeah. It's about confidence. Okay. You know, you didn't do that, but I could see that if you were really under pressure yeah. and you were very like, Let's say you had a visa deadline yeah. and you, you must get this and, you know, everyone's <laughs> expecting you. You could go into the test and yeah. speak inside your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. That could affect clarity okay. and could drop your score a little bit. It didn't happen this time. My best advice would be imagine you're speaking to the examiner and they are sitting against that wall and pointing 10 feet away. Okay. All right. So we're about six feet away yeah. double that okay all right uh, don't um, don't be afraid of like i'm speaking quite loud yeah. to you at the minute yeah. uh, <laughs> don't be afraid of because you see you seem the type of person that um maybe thinks speaking loudly at someone is rude and some i don't know some cu different cultures out there. is that the case in india or um. Yeah, it is, I think. I'm Irish, so we don't care uh, how yeah. loudly we, you know, if you go to an Irish pub, you'll, 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 you'll hear how, how the volume that pe most people speak. Up the volume a little bit. Again, pretend that they're 10 feet away instead of six feet away. You also um, use higher level pronunciation features quite well. Um, intonation. So the intonation is when our voice goes up and our voice goes down. Yeah. If I come home late... <laughs> and my wife, I said, my wife says, fine. That's not, that doesn't That's mean not fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So we use intonation to convey meaning. So fine, fine, the same word, two completely different meanings. Yeah. One, I'm in trouble, one, everything is actually fine. When people are nervous, they tend to have quite flat intonation. You didn't do that, but... Um, on test day, just be aware of that. A good tip is to, re before the test, record yourself speaking okay. and listen to your intonation. If I listen to you speak to your friends, yeah. your intonation would be more extreme, yeah. I think. Because, hey, hey, how's it yeah. going? You know, more, <laughs> when people are in a test and they're nervous and they're formal, they tend to speak more like this okay. and very, very formal. It is not a formal test. And you might get a, an examiner who is very friendly. Yeah. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> Sometimes they had a, you know, everybody has yeah. a bad day and their intonation might be quite flat and form, formal and robotic. And people often um, mirror other people, especially yeah. when there's a, a power dynamic, like someone seems more powerful yeah. because they're an examiner. Some students go in and they have great intonation outside the, t the test and then they go into the test and their intonation their speech patterns yeah. are a little bit rigid and formal and robotic. 
that wasn't the case, I don't think, with you. A little bit, maybe, but not not a big deal. Okay. Next is um, coherence and fluency. Coherence is, did you answer the question? It's like, if I asked you to talk about when the weather was perfect, did you actually mention a day when the weather was perfect? Um, and you did all the questions, you actually answered them, and you developed them enough. Um, even some of the questions in part three that you had difficulty with, um, you developed them enough. And, and that, that was absolutely fine. I have no problems with that at all. Your fluency, um, the only time when you had an issue with fluency was in the middle of part two when you were you know, reformulating things yeah. and you were repeating things to try and think of other things. That is fine um, because you only did it once in part two. It's not like they focus in, oh, you paused one time or yeah. you repeated something one time. They will listen to the whole thing and base the score on the whole thing. Um, and you, you did an excellent job overall. You did pause at some times in part three when you were trying to think, but that had nothing to do with your language ability. Some people pause um, when they're trying to think of the correct, what's the correct adjective or what's the correct verb to use and what's the tense to use. You didn't do that. It was only really about ideas. And again, that's related to stress and nervousness because people think that the examiner wants the best idea or yeah. the correct idea. Remember, it's a speaking test. There are no extra marks for great ideas. Yeah. You could be the leading expert in the world on on weather and weather forecasting, <laughs> <laughs> or you could know nothing about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. All that matters is your pronunciation, your fluency, your grammar, and your vocabulary. So just do what you did. And if you get an unusual topic or a topic you're not comfortable with, do what you did, which is attempt it, but explain, like, I don't really know much about yeah. this. And again, just don't put too much pressure on yourself thinking, I need to give the world's greatest answer. <laughs> you, you don't. For grammar, um, so there, there's two things the examiner will think about. One is the range of your grammar. Do you have enough grammar? So if I ask you about the past, do you know how to use past simple, present perfect? Um, if I ask you about things to do in the future, do you have future structures? Do you know how to use comparatives and all and uh, superlatives and all of these different little grammar structures? Everything that I threw at you, you were able to cope with that. So I don't think there's any problem with your range of, of grammar at all. The second thing that the examiner will think about is the um, your, your accuracy. Um, overall, your accuracy is very good. There's no systematic errors. What a systematic error is, every time you use that part of grammar, such as articles or prepositions, every time or nearly every time you use it, you make a mistake. That means that that system, that part of the grammar, you don't know how to use that yet. Yeah. You don't have that, but you do have little slips every now and again. Okay. Um, and those are, are, are not a huge problem. So for example, you have these errors. Most of the time you uh, use prepositions correctly, but sometimes you have little slips. Yeah. So most of the time you use articles, you use them correctly, okay. but sometimes you make little slips, but they're quite rare. And they don't stop me understanding what you're saying. So if you said to me, my friend and I went to a cinema instead of my friend and I went to the cinema, that doesn't stop me understanding that you and your friend went to a yeah. cinema. So for grammar, you would get a very high score. But on test day, if you're nervous and that MacBook Pro <laughs> starts having too much pressure on it, just like a computer, we make more mistakes when we're nervous and when we're stressed out. So there's nothing wrong with your grammar. Again, the biggest enemy is really yourself. The more pressure you put on yourself, yeah. the more mistakes that you will make. Vocabulary. So there's two things that the examiner will think about. Accuracy. Are you using words accurately to describe things? And, and you know, nouns, verbs, adjectives, are, are those actually accurate? The words that you're using. You have no problem with accuracy at all. And then the second thing is range. When I ask you about weather, do you have enough weather vocabulary to do that? When I ask you about, we were talking about high school and education, do you have enough vocabulary? You do, but I think that you play it safe a little bit. So the weather was nice. Mm -hmm. is, are there other ways that you could describe the weather? That is not inaccurate. And there's nothing wrong with that. But in a speaking test, you 
you are capable of showing off your vocabulary more. Now, for the vast majority of people, I would say the opposite. Especially people from India tend to show off and add in these crazy, big, long, uh, amazing words, and they think that will boost their score. You have the opposite problem, which I think that, which is quite rare, is you're capable of using more vocabulary, but you, you play it quite safe. And it all depends on what score you want. If you want the absolute top score, you don't have to every sentence be throwing in a big complicated word, but you just have to, th you know, every now and again, throw in something a little bit more advanced yeah. and that would really, really help you. Am I correct in that you are yeah. capable of doing that <laughs> yeah. or you are? Yeah. yeah. Up to you what you want to do, but I, that, that would be my <laughs> advice. So for um, pronunciation, if you were nervous and you were speaking inside your mouth, you would get prob on test day, you would probably get a band eight, but I think that you are capable of a band nine. I think today you were a band nine, um, which is the top score. Fluency, on test day, if you were repeating things a little bit and, and you are searching for ideas and you're putting too much pressure on yourself, you possibly could get a band eight. I think you're capable of getting a band nine. Today, I think that, that you were a band nine, which is the top score. What it says for grammar is that even a band nine student can make slips. I think that today you probably would get a band nine on test day if you're nervous and you make them a wee bit more regularly you would get a band eight. Vocabulary, I think today you were a band eight because you, all of your stuff is accurate, um, but you're playing it too safe. Today you would get a very, very high score, but in our next test, I'll be expecting an, e an even higher score because okay. I think you can do way better than that you're, you're currently showing. What do you think about that? Any questions or anything? No. No? Yeah. Oh, <laughs>